The Subi or Suevi, Suavi, or Suvians were a large group of Germanic tribes, which included the Marcomanni, Quadi, Hermondori, Semnons, Lombards, and others, sometimes including sub groups simply referred to as Subi. In the broadest sense, the Subi are associated with the early Germanic tribal group Erminwans, also mentioned by classical authors. Beginning in the 1st century BC, various Suebian tribes moved southwestwards from the Baltic Sea and the Elbe and came into conflict with ancient Rome. They are first mentioned by Julius Caesar in connection with the invasion of Gaul by the Suebian chieftain Ariovistus during the Gallic Wars. During the reign of Augustus, the Subi expanded southwards at the expense of Gallic tribes, establishing a Germanic presence in the immediate areas north of the Danube. During this time, Morobidus of the Marcomanni established the first confederation of Germanic tribes in Bohemia. Under the reign of Marcus Aurelius in the 2nd century AD, the Marcomanni, under pressure from East Germanic tribes, invaded Italy. By the crisis of the 3rd century, new Suebian groups had emerged, and Italy was invaded again by the Juthungi, while the Alemanni ravaged Gaul and settled the Agri Decamates. The Alemanni continued exerting pressure on Gaul, while the Alemannic chieftain Crocus played an important role in elevating Constantine the Great to Roman Emperor. By the late 4th century AD, many Subi were migrating westwards under Hunnic pressure, and in 406 AD, Suebian tribes led by Hermeric crossed the Rhine and briefly overran Hispania, where they eventually established the Kingdom of the Subi. During the last years of the decline of the Western Roman Empire, the Suebian general Ricimer was its de facto ruler. The Lombards later settled Italy and established the Kingdom of the Lombards. The Alemanni, Bavari and Thuringi who remained in Germania gave their name to the German regions of Swabia, Bavaria and Thuringia respectively. The Subi are thought to encompass the high German cultures and dialects predominant in southern Germany, Switzerland and Austria. Etymology <inaudible> 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 Etymologists trace the name from Proto-Germanic asterisk Suebas, either based on the Proto-Germanic root asterisk Sui meaning one's own people or on the third person reflexive pronoun, or from an earlier Indo-European root asterisk SWE Polish SWE, Swaj, SWOI, Latin Sue, Sanskrit SWA, each meaning one's own. The etymological sources list the following ethnic names as being from the same root, Suiones, Samnites, Sabellians, and Sabines, indicating the possibility of a prior more extended and common Indo-European ethnic name, our own people. Notably, the Semnons, known to classical authors as one of the largest Suebian groups, also seem to have a name with this same meaning, but recorded with a different pronunciation by the Romans. Alternatively, it may be borrowed from a Celtic word for vagabond. Topic. Classification Topic. More than one tribe Caesar placed the Subi east of the Ubi apparently near modern Hesse, in the position where later writers mention the Chatti, and he distinguished them from their allies the Marcomanni. Some commentators believe that Caesar's Subi were the later Chatti or possibly the Hermondori, or Semnons. Later authors use the term Subi more broadly to cover a large number of tribes in central Germany." While Caesar treated them as one Germanic tribe within an alliance, albeit the largest and most warlike one, later authors, such as Tacitus, Pliny the Elder and Strabo, specified that the Suevi do not, like the Chatti or Tenctary, constitute a single nation. They actually occupy more than half of Germania, and are divided into a number of distinct tribes under distinct names, though all generally are called Subi. Although no classical authors explicitly call the Chatti Suvich, Pliny the Elder 23 AD to 79 AD, reported in his Natural History that the Erminwans were a large grouping of related Germanic gentis or tribes, including not only the Subi, but also the Hermondori, Chatti and Cherishi. Whether or not the Chatti were ever considered Suevi, both Tacitus and Strabo distinguish the two partly because the Chatti were more settled in one territory, whereas Suevi remained less settled. The definitions of the greater ethnic groupings within Germania were apparently not always consistent and clear, especially in the case of mobile groups such as the Suevi. Whereas Tacitus reported three main kinds of German peoples, Erminwans, Istvewans, and Ingevones, Pliny specifically adds two more genera or 
Kinds, the Bastarnae and the Vandili Vandals. The Vandals were tribes east of the Elbe, including the well-known Selingi, Goths, and Burgundians, an area that Tacitus treated as Subic. That the Vandals might be a separate type of Germanic people, corresponding to the modern concept of East Germanic, is a possibility that Tacitus also noted, but for example the Varini are named as Vandilic by Pliny, and specifically Subic by Tacitus. At one time, classical ethnography had applied the name Suevi to so many Germanic tribes that it appeared as if, in the first centuries AD, that native name would replace the foreign name, Germans. The modern term, Elb Germanic, similarly covers a large grouping of Germanic peoples that at least overlaps with the classical terms, Suevi and Erminwans. However, this term was developed mainly as an attempt to define the ancient peoples who must have spoken the Germanic dialects that led to modern Upper German dialects spoken in Austria, Bavaria, Thuringia, Alsace, Baden-Württemberg and German-speaking Switzerland. This was proposed by Friedrich Maurer as one of five major Kulturkreis or culture groups, whose dialects developed in the southern German area from the 1st century BC through to the 4th century AD. Apart from his own linguistic work with modern dialects, he also referred to the archaeological and literary analysis of Germanic tribes done earlier by Gustav Kassina in terms of these proposed ancient dialects. The Vandals, Goths, and Burgundians are generally referred to as members of the Eastern Germanic group, distinct from the Elbe Germanic. Topic: <laughs> Tribes' names in classical sources. Topic. Northern bank of the Danube In the time of Caesar, southern Germany was Celtic, but coming under pressure from Germanic groups led by the Subi. As described later by Tacitus, what is today southern Germany between the Danube, the main river, and the Rhine had been deserted by the departure of two large Celtic nations, the Helvetii in modern Schwaben and the Boi further east near the Hercynian forest. In addition, also near the Hercynian forest Caesar believed that the Celtic tectosages had once lived. All of these peoples had for the most part moved by the time of Tacitus. Nevertheless, Cassius Dio wrote that the Subi, who dwelt across the Rhine, were called Celts, which could mean that some Celtic groups were absorbed by larger Germanic tribal confederations. Strabo 64 BC, c. 24 AD, in Book IV of his geography also associates the Subi with the Hercynian forest and the south of Germania north of the Danube. He describes a chain of mountains north of the Danube that is like a lower extension of the Alps, possibly the Swabian Alps, and further east the Gabretta forest, possibly the modern Bohemian forest. In Book 7 .3, Strabo specifically mentions as Suvich peoples the Marcomanni, who under King Maribotus had moved into the same Hercynian forest as the Koldui possibly the Quadi, taking over an area called Boiheimum. This king took the rulership and acquired, in addition to the peoples aforementioned, the Lugi a large tribe, the Zumi, the Butones, the Mugalones, the Sabini, and also the Semnons, a large tribe of the Suevi themselves. Some of these tribes were inside the forest, and some outside of it. Tacitus confirms the name Boiemum, saying it was a survival marking the old traditional population of the place, the Celtic boy, though the population had changed. Tacitus describes a series of very powerful Suebian states in his own time, running along the north of the Danube, which was the frontier with Rome, and stretching into the lands where the Elbe originates in the modern-day Czech Republic. Going from west to east the first were the Hermondori, living near the sources of the Elbe and stretching across the Danube into Roman Raetia. Next came the Naristi, the Marcomanni, and then the Quadi. The Quadi are on the edge of Greater Suebia, having the Sarmatians to the southeast. Claudius Ptolemy the geographer did not always state which tribes were Subi, but along the northern bank of the Danube, from west to east and starting at the desert. Formerly occupied by the Helvetii, he names the Parmacampi, then the Adrabicampi, and then a large people, known as the Baimoi, whose name appears to recall the boy again, and then the Ricatrii. North of the Baimoi, is the Luna forest which has iron mines, and which is south of the Quadi. North of the Adrabicampi, are the Sedini and then the Marcomanni living in the Gambretta forest. North of them, but south of the Sudetes Mountains which are not likely to be the same as the modern ones of that name are the Varisti, who are probably the same as Tacitus's Nuristi, mentioned above. 
Jordanes writes that in the early 4th century the Vandals had moved to the north of the Danube, but with the Marcomanni still to their west, and the Hermondori still to their north. A possible sign of confusion in this comment is that he equates the area in question to later Gepidia, which was further south, in Pannonia, modern Hungary, and east of the Danube. In general, as discussed below, the Danubian Subi, along with the neighbours such as the Vandals, apparently moved southwards into Roman territories, both south and east of the Danube, during this period. Topic. Approaching the Rhine Caesar describes the Subi as pressing the German tribes of the Rhine, such as the Tencteri, Eusipetes and Ubi, from the east, forcing them from their homes. While emphasizing their warlike nature he writes as if they had a settled homeland somewhere between the Cherishi and the Ubi, and separated from the Cherishi by a deep forest called the Silva Bacinus. He also describes the Marcomanni as a tribe distinct from the Subi, and also active within the same alliance. But he does not describe where they were living. Strabo wrote that the Subi excel all the others in power and numbers. He describes Subic peoples Greek ethna as having come to dominate Germany between the Rhine and Elbe, with the exception of the Rhine Valley, on the frontier with the Roman Empire, and the coastal regions north of the Rhine. The geographer Ptolemy C. AD 90 C. AD 168, in a fairly extensive account of Greater Germany, makes several unusual mentions of Subi between the Rhine and the Elbe. He describes their position as stretching out in a band from the Elbe, all the way to the northern Rhine, near the Sagambri. The Suevi Langobardi are the Suevi located closest to the Rhine, far to the east of where most sources report them. To the east of the Langobardi, are the Suevi Angeli extending as far north as the Middle Elbe, also to the east of the position reported in other sources. It has been speculated that Ptolemy may have been confused by his sources, or else that this position of the Langobardi represented a particular moment in history, as discussed below. In the 3rd century a large group of Subi, also referred to as the Alemanni, moved up to the Rhine bank in modern Schwaben, which had previously been controlled by the Romans. They competed in this region with Burgundians who had arrived from further east. Topic. The Elbe Strabo does not say much about the Subi east of the Elbe, saying that this region was still unknown to Romans, but mentions that a part of the Subi live there, naming only specifically the Hermondori and the Langobardi. But he mentions these are there because of recent defeats at Roman hands which had forced them over the river. Tacitus mentions that the Hermondori were later welcomed onto the Roman border at the Danube. In any case, he says that the area near the Elbe itself is held by the Subi. From Tacitus and Ptolemy, we can derive more details. The Semnons are described by Tacitus as the oldest and noblest of the Subi, and, like the Subi described by Caesar, they have 100 cantons. Tacitus says that the vastness of their community makes them regard themselves as the head of the Suvich race. According to Ptolemy the Suevi Semnons live upon the Elbe and stretch as far east as a river apparently named after them, the Suvis, probably the Oder. South of them he places the Salingi, and then, again upon the Elbe, the Calicones. To the southeast further up the Upper Elbe he places not the Hermondori mentioned by other authors who had possibly moved westwards and become Ptolemy Torikimai and the later Thuringi, but the Bainachimai whose name appears to be somehow related to the modern name Bohemia, and somehow derived from the older place name mentioned by Strabo and Tacitus as the capital of King Maribotus after he settled his Marcomanni in the Hercynian forest. A monument confirms that the Juthungi, who fought the Romans in the 3rd century, and were associated with the Alemanni, were Semnons. The Langobardi live a bit further from Rome's borders, in scanty numbers, but surrounded by a host of most powerful tribes, and kept safe, by daring the perils of war, according to Tacitus. Tacitus names seven tribes who live, next, after the Langobardi, fenced in by rivers or forests, stretching, into the remoter regions of Germany. These all worshipped Nertha, or Mother Earth, whose sacred grove was on an island in the ocean presumably the Baltic Sea, Rudini, Aviones, Angli, Varini, Eudoses, Swarini and Neutwans. At the mouth of the Elbe and in the Danish peninsula, the classical authors do not place any Suevi, but rather the Chassi to the west of the Elbe, and the Saxons to the east, and in the neck 
of the peninsula, note that while various errors and confusions are possible, Ptolemy places the Angles and Langobardi west of the Elbe, where they may indeed have been present at some points in time, given that the Subi were often mobile. <laughs> east of the Elbe it is already mentioned above that stretching between the Elbe and the Oder, the classical authors place the Subic Semnons. Ptolemy places the Selingi to their south in the stretch between these rivers. These Selingi appear in later history as a branch of the Vandals, and were therefore likely to be speakers of East Germanic dialects. Their name is associated with medieval Silesia. Further south on the Elbe are the Bainachimai and between them and the Askeborgian Mountains Ptolemy names a tribe called the Batini, Batinoi apparently north and or east of the Elbe. According to Tacitus, around the north of the Danubian Marcomanni and Quadi, dwelling in forests and on mountain tops, live the Marsigni, and Buri, who, in their language and manner of life, resemble the Suevi. Living partly subject to the Quadi are the Gotini and Osi, who Tacitus says speak respectively Gaulish and Pannonian, and are therefore not Germans. Ptolemy also places the Lugi Buri in mountains, along with a tribe called the Corconti. These mountains, stretching from near the upper Elbe to the headwaters of the Vistula, he calls the Askeborgian Mountains. Between these mountains and the Quadi he adds several tribes, from north to south these are the Sidones, Cotini possibly Tacitus's Gotini, and the Visbergi. There is then the Orsinian forest, which Ptolemy defines with relatively restricted boundaries, and then the Quadi. Beyond this mountain range probably the modern Sudetes where the Marsigni and Buri lived, in the area of modern southwest Poland, Tacitus reported a multitude of tribes, the most widespread name of which was the Lugi. These included the Hari, Helvetsone, Manimi, Helesi, and Naharvali. Tacitus does not mention the language of the Lugi. As mentioned above, Ptolemy categorizes the Buri amongst the Lugi, and concerning the Lugi north of the mountains, he named two large groups, the Lugoi Omanoi and the Lugoi Didonoi, who live between the Suvis River, probably the Sol or Oder River, and the Vistula, south of the Burgundy. These Burgundians who according to Ptolemy lived between the Baltic Sea Germans and the Lugi, stretching between the Suvis and Vistula rivers, were described by Pliny the Elder as opposed to Tacitus as being not Suvic but Vandili, amongst whom he also included the Goths, and the Varini, both being people living north of them near the Baltic coast. Pliny's Vandili are generally thought to be speakers of what modern linguists refer to as Eastern Germanic. Between the coastal Saxons and inland Subi, Ptolemy names the Teutonari and the Varuni, presumably the Varini of Tacitus, and further east, between the coastal Faradini and the Subi are the Teutones and then the Avarni. Further east again, between the Burgundians and the coastal Rugicle were the Elve ones, presumably the Helvetsone of Tacitus. Topic. Baltic Sea Tacitus called the Baltic Sea the Suebian Sea. Pomponius Mela wrote in his description of the world 3 .3 beyond the Danish Isles are the farthest people of Germania, the Hermiones. North of the Lugi, near the Baltic Sea, Tacitus places the Gothwans Goths, Rugi, and Lemuvi. These three Germanic tribes share a tradition of having kings, and also similar arms, round shields and short swords. Ptolemy says that east of the Saxons, from the Chalusis River to the Suvian River are the Faradini, then the Sidini up to the Viadwa River, and after these the Rugicle up to the Vistula River, probably the Rugi of Tacitus. He does not specify if these are Suevi. In the sea, the states of the Suiones, powerful in ships, are, according to Tacitus, Germans with the Suvic Baltic Sea on one side and an almost motionless. See on the other more remote side. Modern commentators believe this refers to Scandinavia. Closely bordering on the Suiones and closely resembling them, are the tribes of the Sitwans. Ptolemy describes Scandinavia as being inhabited by Chaidini in the west, Favane and Phareeshi in the east, Finni in the north, Gati and Dashiones in the south, and Livoni in the middle. He does not describe them as Subi. Tacitus describes the non Germanic St on the eastern shore of the Suvich Sea. Baltic, whose rites and fashions and style of dress are those of the Suevi, while their language is more like the British. After giving this account, Tacitus says, Here Suebia ends. Therefore, for Tacitus geographic, Suebia 
comprises the entire periphery of the Baltic Sea, including within it tribes not identified as Subi or even Germanic. On the other hand, Tacitus does clearly consider there to be not only a Suebian region, but also Suebian languages, and Suebian customs, which all contribute to making a specific tribe more or less Suebian. Topic: Cultural characteristics. Caesar noted that rather than grain crops, they spent time on husbandry and hunting. They wore animal skins, bathed in rivers, consumed milk and meat products, and prohibited wine, allowing trade only to dispose of their booty and otherwise they had no goods to export. They had no private ownership of land and were not permitted to stay resident in one place for more than one year. They were divided into 100 cantons, each of which had to provide and support 1,000 armed men for the constant pursuit of war. Strabo describes the Subi and people from their part of the world as highly mobile and nomadic, unlike more settled and agricultural tribes such as the Chatti and Cherishi. Less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 they do not till the soil or even store up food, but live in small huts that are merely temporary structures, and they live for the most part off their flocks, as the nomads do, so that, in imitation of the nomads, they load their household belongings on their wagons and with their beasts turn whithersoever they think best. Notable in classical sources, the Subi can be identified by their hairstyle called the Suebian knot, which distinguishes the freeman from the slave, or in other words served as a badge of social rank. The same passage points out that chiefs use an even more elaborate style. Tacitus mentions the sacrifice of humans practiced by the Semnons in a sacred grove and the murder of slaves used in the rites of Nerthus practiced by the tribes of Schleswig-Holstein. The chief priest of the Naharvali dresses as a woman and that tribe also worships in groves. The Hari fight at night dyed black. The Suiones own fleets of rowing vessels with prows at both ends. <laughs> <laughs> Language While there is debate possible about whether all tribes identified by Romans as Germanic spoke a Germanic language, the Subi are generally agreed to have spoken one, and classical sources refer to a Suebian language. In particular, the Subi are associated with the concept of an Elbe Germanic group of early dialects spoken by the Erminwans, entering Germany from the east, and originating on the Baltic. In late classical times, these dialects, by now situated to the south of the Elbe, and stretching across the Danube into the Roman Empire, experienced the High German consonant shift that defines modern High German languages, and in its most extreme form, Upper German, Modern Swabian German, and Alemannic German more broadly, are therefore assumed to have evolved at least in part from Suebian. However, Bavarian, the Thuringian dialect, the Lombardic language spoken by the Lombards of Italy, and standard High German itself are also at least partly derived from the dialect spoken by the Subi. The only non Suebian name among the major groups of Upper Germanic dialects is High Franconian German, but this is on the transitional frontier with Central German, as is neighboring Thuringian. Historical events Ariovistus and the Subi in 58 BC Julius Caesar 100 BC the 15th of March 44 BC describes the Subi in his first-hand account De Bello Gallico as the largest and the most warlike nation of all the Germans Caesar confronted a large army led by a Suevic king named Ariovistus in 58 BC who had been settled for some time in Gaul already at the invitation of the Gaulish Arverni and Sequani as part of their war against the Aedui He had already been recognized as a king by the Roman Senate Ariovistus forbade the Romans from entering into Gaul. Caesar on the other hand saw himself and Rome as an ally and defender of the Aedui. The forces Caesar faced in battle were composed of Harudes, Marcomanni, Tribaci, Vangiones, Nemedas, Sadduci, and Suevi. While Caesar was preparing for conflict, a new force of Subi was led to the Rhine by two brothers, Nasuas and Cimbarius, forcing Caesar to rush in order to try to avoid the joining of forces. Caesar defeated Ariovistus in battle, forcing him to escape across the Rhine. When news of this spread, the fresh Suebian forces turned back in some panic, which led local tribes on the Rhine to take advantage of the situation and attack them. 
Topic: Caesar and the Subi in 55 BC. Also reported within Caesar's accounts of the Gallic Wars, the Subi posed another threat in 55 BC. The Germanic Ubi, who had worked out an alliance with Caesar, were complaining of being harassed by the Subi, and the Tenctari and Eusipetes, already forced from their homes, tried to cross the Rhine and enter Gaul by force. Caesar bridged the Rhine, the first known to do so, with a pile bridge, which though considered a marvel, was dismantled after only 18 days. The Subi abandoned their towns closest to the Romans, retreated to the forest and assembled an army. Caesar moved back across the bridge and broke it down, stating that he had achieved his objective of warning the Subi. They in turn supposedly stopped harassing the Ubi. The Ubi were later resettled on the west bank of the Rhine, in Roman territory. Topic. Rhine crossing of 29 BC Cassius Dio c. Ad wrote the history of Rome for a Greek audience. He reported that, shortly before 29 BC, the Subi crossed the Rhine, only to be defeated by Gaius Carinus who, along with the young Octavian Caesar, celebrated a triumph in 29 BC. Shortly after they turn up fighting a group of Dacians in a gladiatorial display at Rome celebrating the consecration of the Julian hero shrine. The victory of Drusus in 9 BC Suetonius c. 69 AD, after 122 AD, gives the Subi brief mention in connection with their defeat against Nero Claudius Drusus in 9 BC. He says that the Subi and Sagambri submitted to him and were taken into Gaul and settled in lands near the Rhine, while the other Germani were pushed to the farther side of the river Albus. Elbe. He must have meant the temporary military success of Drusus, as it is unlikely the Rhine was cleared of Germans. Elsewhere he identifies the settlers as 40,000 prisoners of war, only a fraction of the yearly draft of militia. Florus c. 74 AD, c. 130 AD, gives a more detailed view of the operations of 9 BC. He reports that the Cherishi, Subi and Sicambri formed an alliance by crucifying 20 Roman centurions, but that Drusus defeated them, confiscated their plunder and sold them into slavery. Presumably only the war party was sold, as the Subi continue to appear in the ancient sources. Florus's report of the peace brought to Germany by Drusus is glowing but premature. He built more than 500 forts and two bridges guarded by fleets. He opened a way through the Hercynian forest, which implies but still does not overtly state that he had subdued the Subi. In a word, there was such peace in Germany that the inhabitants seemed changed and the very climate milder and softer than it used to be." In the Annales of Tacitus, it is mentioned that after the defeat of 9 BC Augustus divided the Germans by making a separate peace with the Sagambri and Subi under their king Merobidus. This is the first mention of any permanent king of the Subi. However, Merobidus was in most sources referred to as the king of the Marcomanni, a tribal name that had already been distinct from the Subi in Caesar's time. As discussed above, it is not sure which Subi were the Subi of Caesar, but at least they were distinguished from the Marcomanni. However, Merobidus was also described as Suebian, and his association with the Marcomanni more specifically comes after the Langobards and Semnons were specifically said to have left his kingdom, having previously been under his rule. At some point in this period the Marcomanni had come to be settled in the forested regions once inhabited by the boy, in and around Bohemia, under his rule. Augustus planned in 6 AD to destroy the kingdom of Merobidus, which he considered to be too dangerous for the Romans. The later emperor Tiberius commanded 12 legions to attack the Marcomanni, but the outbreak of a revolt in Illyria, and the need for troops there, forced Tiberius to conclude a treaty with Merobidus and to recognize him as king. <laughs> Roman defeat in 9 AD After the death of Drusus, the Cherishi annihilated three legions at the Battle of Teutoburg Forest and thereafter. The Empire was checked on the banks of the Rhine. While elements of the Suevi may have been involved, this was an alliance mainly made up of non Subic tribes from northwestern Germany the Cherishi, Marsi, Chatti, Bructeri, Chassi, and Sicambri. 
The Kingdom of the Marcomanni and their allies stayed out of the conflict and when Morobidus was sent the head of the defeated Roman leader Varus, he sent it on to Rome for burial. Within his own alliance were various Subic peoples, Hermondori, Quadi, Semnons, Lugi, Zumi, Butones, Mugalones, Sabini and Langobards. Aftermath of 9 AD Subsequently, Augustus placed Germanicus, the son of Drusus, in charge of the forces of the Rhine and he, after dealing with a mutiny among his troops, proceeded against the Cherusci and their allies, breaking their power finally at the Battle of Idistavisus, a plain on the Vaser. All eight legions and supporting units of Gauls were required in order to accomplish this. Germanicus' zeal led finally to his being replaced 17 AD by his cousin Drusus, Tiberius' son, as Tiberius thought it best to follow his predecessor's policy of limiting the empire. Germanicus certainly would have involved the Subi, with unpredictable results. Arminius, leader of the Cherusci and allies, now had a free hand. He accused Morobidus of hiding in the Hercynian forest while the other Germans fought for freedom, and of being the only king among the Germans. The two groups turned their arms against each other. The Subic Semnons and Langobardi rebelled against their king and went over to the Cherusci. Left with only the Marcomanni and Herminius's uncle, who had defected, Morobidus appealed to Drusus, now governor of Illyricum, and was given only a pretext of aid. The resulting battle was indecisive but Morobidus withdrew to Bohemia and sent for assistance to Tiberius. He was refused on the grounds that he had not moved to help Varus. Drusus encouraged the Germans to finish him off. A force of Goths under Catualda, a Marcomanian exile, bought off the nobles and seized the palace. Morobidus escaped to Noricum and the Romans offered him refuge in Ravenna where he remained the rest of his life. He died in 37 AD. After his expulsion the leadership of the Marcomanni was contested by their Subic neighbors and allies, the Hermondori and Quadi. Marcomannic Wars In the 2nd century AD, the Marcomanni entered into a confederation with other peoples including the Quadi, Vandals, and Sarmatians, against the Roman Empire. The war began in 166, when the Marcomanni overwhelmed the defences between Vindobona and Carnuntum, penetrated along the border between the provinces of Pannonia and Noricum, laid waste to Flavia Solva, and could be stopped only shortly before reaching Aquileia on the Adriatic Sea. The war lasted until Marcus Aurelius' death in 180. In the 3rd century Jordanes claims that the Marcomanni paid tribute to the Goths, and that the princes of the Quadi were enslaved. The Vandals, who had moved south towards Pannonia, were apparently still sometimes able to defend themselves. <inaudible> <inaudible> Migration period In 259 60ths, one or more groups of Subi appear to have been the main element in the formation of a new tribal alliance known as the Alemanni who came to occupy the Roman frontier region known as the Agri Decamates, east of the Rhine and south of the Main. The Alemanni were sometimes simply referred to as Subi by contemporaries, and the region came to be known as Swabia, a name which survives to this day. People in this region of Germany are still called Schwaben, a name derived from the Subi. One specific group in the region in the 3rd century, sometimes distinguished from the Alemanni, were the Juthungi, which a monument found in Augsburg refers to as Semnons. These Subi for the most part stayed on the right bank of the Rhine until 31 December 406, when much of the tribe joined the Vandals and Alans in breaching the Roman frontier by crossing the Rhine, perhaps at Mainz, thus launching an invasion of northern Gaul. It is thought that this group probably contained a significant amount of Quadi, moving out of their homeland under pressure from Radagaisus. Other Subi apparently remained in or near to the original homeland areas near the Elbe and the modern Czech Republic, occasionally still being referred to by this term. They expanded eventually into Roman areas such as Switzerland, Austria, and Bavaria, possibly pushed by groups arriving from the east. Further south, a group of Subi settled in parts of Pannonia, after the Huns were defeated in 454 in the Battle of Nedau. Later, the Suebian king Hunnaman fought against the Ostrogoths in the Battle of Bolia in 469. The Suebian coalition lost the battle, and parts of the Subi therefore migrated to southern Germany. Probably the Marcomanni made up one significant part of these Subi, who probably lived in at least two distinct areas. 
Later, the Lombards, a Subic group long known on the Elbe, came to dominate the Pannonian region before successfully invading Italy. Another group of Subi, the so-called Northern Subi, were mentioned in 569 under the Frankish king Siegbert I in areas of today's Saxony Anhalt which were known as Schwabengau or Svebengau at least until the 12th century. In addition to the Svebi, Saxons and Lombards, returning from the Italian peninsula in 573, are mentioned. Topic. Suvian Kingdom of Gaiaisia Topic. Migration Subi under King Hermeric, probably coming from the Alemanni, the Quadi, or both, worked their way into the south of France, eventually crossing the Pyrenees and entering the Iberian Peninsula which was no longer under imperial rule since the rebellion of Gerontius and Maximus in 409. Passing through the Basque country, they settled in the Roman province of Gaiaisia, in northwestern Hispania modern Galicia, Asturias, and northern Portugal, swore fealty to Emperor Honorius and were accepted as Fodorati and permitted to settle, under their own autonomous governance. Contemporaneously with the self-governing province of Britannia, the kingdom of the Subi and Gaiaisia became the first of the sub-Roman kingdoms to be formed in the disintegrating territory of the Western Roman Empire. Subic Gaiaisia was the first kingdom separated from the Roman Empire to mint coins. The Subic kingdom in Gaiaisia and northern Lusitania was established in 410 and lasted until 584. Smaller than the Ostrogothic kingdom of Italy or the Visigothic kingdom in Hispania, it reached a relative stability and prosperity, and even expanded military southwards, despite the occasional quarrels with the neighboring Visigothic kingdom. Topic. Settlement The Germanic invaders and immigrants settled mainly in rural areas, as Idatius clearly stated, "...the Hispanic, spread over cities and opida and the "...barbarians, govern over the provinces." According to Dan Stanislavski, the Portuguese way of living in northern regions is mostly inherited from the Subi, in which small farms prevail, distinct from the large properties of southern Portugal. Bracara Augusta, the modern city of Braga and former capital of Roman Gaiaisia, became the capital of the Subi. Orosius, at that time resident in Hispania, shows a rather pacific initial settlement, the newcomers working their lands or serving as bodyguards of the locals. Another Germanic group that accompanied the Subi and settled in Gaiaisia were the Buri. They settled in the region between the rivers Cavado and Hamam, in the area known as Terras de Boro lands of the Buri, as the Subi quickly adopted the local language, few traces were left of their Germanic tongue, but for some words and for their personal and land names, adopted by most of the Galicians. In Galicia four parishes and six villages are named Suevos or Suegos, i.e. Suves, after old Subic settlements. Topic. Establishment. The Visigoths were sent in 416 by the emperor to fight the Germanic invaders in Hispania, but they soon re-established themselves as Fodorati in Aquitania after completely defeating the Alans and the Salingi Vandals. The absence of competition permitted first, the Asdingi Vandals, and later, the Subi, to expand south and east. In its heyday Subic Gaiaisia extended as far south as Merida and Seville, capitals of the Roman provinces of Lusitania and Betica, while their expeditions reached Zaragoza and Leda. In 438 Hermeric ratified the peace with the Galaeci, the local and partially Romanized rural population, and, weary of fighting, abdicated in favor of his son Ricilla, who proved to be a notable general, defeating first Andevitus, Romani Militiae Dukes, and later Vitus Magister Utrisc Militiae. In 448, Ricilla died, leaving the crown to his son Ricciar who had converted to Roman Catholicism circa 447. Soon, he married a daughter of the Gothic king Theodoric I, and began a wave of attacks on the Terraconense, still a Roman province. By 456 the campaigns of Ricciar clashed with the interests of the Visigoths, and a large army of Roman federates Visigoths under the command of Theodoric II, Burgundians directed by kings Gundioc and Chilpuric crossed the Pyrenees into Hispania, and defeated the Subi near modern-day Astorga. Ricciar was executed after being captured by his brother-in-law, the Visigothic king Theodoric II. In 459, the Roman Emperor Majorian defeated the Subi, briefly restoring Roman rule in northern Hispania. 
Nevertheless, the Subi became free of Roman control forever after Majorian was assassinated two years later. The Subic kingdom then became cornered in the northwest, in Gaiaisia and northern Lusitania, where political division and civil war arose among several pretenders to the royal throne. After years of turmoil, Remismund was recognized as the sole king of the Subi, bringing forth a politic of friendship with the Visigoths, and favoring the conversion of his people to Arianism. <laughs> Last years of the kingdom In 561 King Ariamir called the Catholic First Council of Braga, which dealt with the old problem of the Priscillianism heresy. Eight years after, in 569, King Theodomish called the First Council of Lugo, in order to increase the number of dioceses within his kingdom. Its acts have been preserved through a medieval resume known as Periciali Suvorum or Divisio Theodomiri. <laughs> Defeat by the Visigoths In 570 the Arian king of the Visigoths, Leovigild, made his first attack on the Subi. Between 572 and 574, Leovigild invaded the valley of the Douro, pushing the Subi west and northwards. In 575 the Subic king, Miro, made a peace treaty with Leovigild in what seemed to be the beginning of a new period of stability. Yet, in 583 Miro supported the rebellion of the Catholic Gothic prince Hermenegild, engaging in military action against King Leovigild, although Miro was defeated in Seville when trying to break on through the blockade on the Catholic prince. As a result, he was forced to recognize Leovigild as friend and protector, for him and for his successors, dying back home just some months later. His son, King Eboric, confirmed the friendship with Leovigild, but he was deposed just a year later by his brother-in-law Adika, giving Leovigild an excuse to attack the kingdom. In 585 AD, first Adika and later Malaric, were defeated and the Subic kingdom was incorporated into the Visigothic one as its sixth province. The Subi were respected in their properties and freedom, and continued to dwell in Gaiaisia, finally merging with the rest of the local population during the early Middle Ages. Topic. Religion Topic. Conversion to Arianism The Subi remained mostly pagan, and their subjects Priscillianist until an Arian missionary named Ajax, sent by the Visigothic king Theodoric II at the request of the Subic unifier Remismund, in 466 converted them and established a lasting Arian church which dominated the people until the conversion to Chalcedonianism in the 560s. Topic. Conversion to Chalcedonianism Mutually incompatible accounts of the conversion of the Subi to Chalcedonian Christianity are presented in the primary records. The minutes of the First Council of Braga, which met on 1 May 561, state explicitly that the synod was held at the orders of a king named Ariamir. Of the eight assistant bishops, just one bears a Subic name, Hildemir. While the Catholicism of Ariamir is not in doubt, that he was the first Chalcedonian monarch of the Subi since Rikiar has been contested on the grounds that his Catholicism is not explicitly stated. He was, however, the first Subic monarch to hold a Catholic synod, and when the Second Council of Braga was held at the request of King Miro, a Catholic himself, in 572, of the twelve assistant bishops five bears Subic names, Remisal of Visiu, Adoric of Adana, Witimer of Orense, Nitiges of Lugo and Anila of Tui. The Historia Suvorum of Isidore of Seville states that a king named Theodomar brought about the conversion of his people from Arianism with the help of the missionary Martin of Dumio. According to the Frankish historian Gregory of Tours, on the other hand, an otherwise unknown sovereign named Chareric, having heard of Martin of Tours, promised to accept the beliefs of the saint if only his son would be cured of leprosy. Through the relics and intercession of Saint Martin the son was healed, Chareric and the entire royal household converted to the Nicene faith. By 589, when the Third Council of Toledo was held, and the Visigoth Kingdom of Toledo converted officially from Arianism to Catholicism, King Recaird I stated in its minutes that also, "...an infinite number of Subi have converted," together with the Goths, which implies that the earlier conversion was either superficial or partial. In the same council, four bishops from Gaiaisia abjured of their Arianism. 
and so, the Subic conversion is ascribed, not to a Subi, but to a Visigoth by John of Byclarum, who puts their conversion alongside that of the Goths, occurring under Recared I in 587–589. Most scholars have attempted to meld these stories. It has been alleged that Chararic and Theodomish must have been successors of Ariamir, since Ariamir was the first Subic monarch to lift the ban on Catholic synods. Isidore therefore gets the chronology wrong. Reinhardt suggested that Chararic was converted first through the relics of Saint Martin and that Theodomish was converted later through the preaching of Martin of Dumio. Dan equated Chararic with Theodomish, even saying that the latter was the name he took upon baptism. It has also been suggested that Theodomish and Ariamir were the same person and the son of Chararic. In the opinion of some historians, Chararic is nothing more than an error on the part of Gregory of Tours and never existed. If, as Gregory relates, Martin of Dumio died about the year 580 and had been bishop for about 30 years, then the conversion of Chararic must have occurred around 550 at the latest. Finally, Ferrero believes the conversion of the Subi was progressive and stepwise and that Cararic's public conversion was only followed by the lifting of a ban on Catholic synods in the reign of his successor, which would have been Ariamir. Thodomir was responsible for beginning a persecution of the Arians in his kingdom to root out their heresy. <laughs> <laughs> Norse mythology The name of the Subi also appears in Norse mythology and in early Scandinavian sources. The earliest attestation is the Proto-Norse name Swabaharjaz Suebian warrior, on the Roe runestone and in the place name Svogerslev. Svafa, whose name means Suebian, was a Valkyrie who appears in the Eddic poem Helgic Vyjorwarsinur. The kingdom Svafaland also appears in this poem and in the Irik saga. See also Swabia Dukes of Swabia family tree Germanic personal names in Galicia Leite Topic Notes Topic Bibliography Topic External links The Chronicle of Hydatius is the main source for the history of the Subi in Galicia and Portugal up to 468. Identity and Interaction, the Suevi and the Hispano-Romans, University of Virginia, 2007 Medieval Galician Anthroponymy Minutes of the Councils of Braga and Toledo, in the Collectio Hispania Gallica Augustodonensis Orosius's Historiarum Adversum Paganos Libri 7.